Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a high podcast. I'm Dad. This is your boy, Joey Two Bananas, and this guy's going to ramble on for a second, I bet. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Frank the Tank, smelling kind of rank. God damn it. Looking for something dank. <laughs> I don't know what else with rhymes would take. <laughs> Frankie the Tank. The tank. <laughs> Trying to get some spank? Is that is that slang? I... <laughs> No, uh, I don't think. I know so. crank is <laughs> Ooh, slang. crank is slang for something, right? I just, I don't know what it is, but I think it's heroin. Ah, uh, <laughs> not looking for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is off to a great start. Good job there. <laughs> I aim to please. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are just two guys having a good time talking about dad stuff. And if you've been listening this far, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we appreciate it. Like, thanks. <laughs> so I actually talk about listening to it, bro. Um, My pops called me the other day, my dad, and he was like, yo, I listened to your podcast. And he was like, it had me rolling. I was laughing and stuff like that. But he mentioned, I think he was listening to episode three. And he was like, yo, you really had me dying when you were talking about like the Al Bundy dads. And then the seventh heaven dad, he was like, when you said the seventh heaven dad, I was dying laughing. He was like, because I remember that show. Your mom used to watch it. I hated that guy. <laughs> that guy fucking sucks. <laughs> he was like, yo, he was always such a perfect dad. And I'm over here just doing my best. <laughs> and I was like, that's the point we were making. So he, he's not he's not mad at all, right? Because we, we fucking, we kind of like dog on him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, yo, I'm not a fucking barbarian. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna yoke up Frankie next time I see him. <laughs> you see, you know the funny thing about that is I don't even know what yoke means, so I'm not even nervous. <laughs> what it's is like old do? school slave for like choking up, like grabbing somebody by the neck. You I'm gonna yoke him. Well, I'm gonna egg white him, so <laughs> it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, that, that sounded so wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna give him the egg whites. <laughs> oh my god! What the fuck? Well, if if he's not mad after episode three, episode four is probably where he's going to get upset. <laughs> yeah. We went in hard on our parents on discipline. Ooh, yeah. That's going to be rough. But no, um, I thought it was interesting that he mentioned that, that like, that wasn't just something in our own mind, right? That about the whole the seventh heaven dad and the Al Bundy dad. He was like, yeah. He's like, sometimes I just want to be the Al Bundy dad. I just want to sit on the couch, put my hand down my pants and watch TV. <laughs> I was like, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Say say mean things to your wife, like just be like, like no matter how hot and willing your wife is, sometimes it's like get out of my face. Like I can imagine, you know, with your mom being so hot. Oh my god, <laughs> leave it alone, bro. Twenty years, twenty years. <laughs> She's still pretty hot, man. Even after all this time. Hey yo, come on, bro. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I derailed you on my bed. I had to get it out though. I really Little did. Bit. You've been holding that one in, haven't you? I really have. It's been in there for a bit. <laughs> feel a little better? Yeah, I do. I do. I feel relieved. Like something's right with the universe now. Now that whoever the audience is knows. Anyways, where I was trying to go with that for a second before you jumped in on that was you made a point because I remember as a kid watching it and being like, I don't get it. Like his wife is hot and she always wants to take him upstairs and have adult time with him. And he's always complaining about it. And now as an adult, I get it because I'm like, you can have the hottest wife in the world. And sometimes you're just like, just leave me alone. I just want to sit on the couch, watch my shows, play my game, or just stare at the turned off TV and veg out because I'm tired. So tired. Yeah. I mean, it happens. I get it now. I get it. Al Bundy's not the villain we thought he was. <laughs> no, no, he's not. <laughs> he's the hero. What what was it from Batman? He, he's not the hero we deserve, but he's the hero we need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely but you know it, we we haven't just talked about al bundy right we talked about the seventh heaven dad that asshole yeah we talked about the al bundy um the redemption arc of al bundy when in, he became in, jay pritchett in modern family yeah <laughs> we've actually mentioned a lot of like media dads and it kind of gets me thinking bro like it's weird that all media dads, whether it's on like 80s sitcoms or children's cartoons 
or a BET show or even something on like a, a Spanish channel, like all the dads are usually depicted the same way. They're either like asshole dads that aren't really there or they're doofuses. It was like, yo, yeah. why? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I love watching The Amazing World of Gumball because I think it's just ridiculous. My wife hates it, but like that show's awesome. The dad in that show is a literal idiot. <laughs> He's like Peter Griffin levels of dumb. And like, that's what we're telling generations of kids. Like, yo, dads are dumbasses. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We, we, we kind of are. And it, it just, it sucks to see it now. Yeah. Right. When you're a kid and you're watching Homer Simpson do his stupid shit and you're watching Peter Griffin. I, I watched a lot of family guy when I was oh, a kid. Yeah. Tons. You know, that was like. When we were early teenagers. That was that show that we watched and the parents didn't want us watching. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. And I get it because, like, I don't want my kids to watch that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't watch the show about the guy whose best friend is a dog that wants to bang his wife. You're too yeah, young for that. That's, that's a little weird. <laughs> but, yeah, no, you, you watch those shows and, and it's for the sake of the, the show, right? It's for the sake of comedy. These characters are usually, like, the main characters, right? I mean, we mentioned Fred Flintstone a bunch of times. They always get into some shit, and it, it's usually because of their stupidity yeah. that they get into the shit. Well, you know what? Actually, that's an interesting thing because um, you talk about Fred Flintstone and, and like George Jetson and like those older Hanna Barbera cartoons and uh, the sitcoms they were based off of, like the Honeymooners and stuff like that. Yeah, that was technically, I could say, like the genesis of that dumb dad thing. But they weren't dumb dads back then. They were just no nonsense. Like I'm a man just cook me my dinner and I'm gonna do my own thing. They were so non-aware of their surroundings that they do dumb shit and get into situations like when they have to be at two places at once, that classic sitcom yeah. thing. Because they just couldn't think their way out of a paper bag, but they weren't dumb. They were just stereotypical, like, uh, I, I got too much shit to worry about this womanly stuff kind of guys. Mm -hmm. right? And that slowly morphed into this whole, I'm so dumb, I can't feed myself kind of dad. <laughs> But the wives stayed consistently capable, carrying the families on their backs while these guys just got dumber and dumber. The wives usually started off as like the paragons of the family. Like yeah. they were the ones who like held everything together and were the heart of the family. And the dads were like just there. Yeah, they were either like shit. Yeah. And it makes me wonder, it's, is that why we all had these ideas of dads as just being the mean asshole parent, like that we ha all have kind of some issues with our dads because media tells us dads are dumb, dads are stupid. Adds to that, the fact that dads are usually the disciplinarians, you know? I mean, I think, I think so. I think there's some measure of that. And I mean, a lot of times you learn stuff by just watching it on the TV, right? It's not just you and the people around you it's you're, i mean yeah we're, we're millennials we we got sat in front of the tv you know? well even even our parents got sat in front of the tv too i could tell you my mom and my well not my dad because he's like a immigrante you know <laughs> <laughs> all he had was some sticks and a, and a freaking leaf was, to look yeah. at he was uh, breaking uh, chickens and ducks' necks for, you know, for entertainment. I don't know. <laughs> well, look, that one's still running without a tell. This is the best show ever. <laughs> but my mom was raised in the States. So <laughs> and she had like nine other brothers and sisters. So As is tradition. As is tradition. So they were raised on TV. She could tell you, like, even to this day, all the episodes of Thundercats and blah, 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 and this and that, whatever. But Thundercats came out in the 80s, bro. Did it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. If you're talking about like old school anime or something like that, that your mother wouldn't have seen, it would have been stuff like Voltron or... um. She's seen Voltron. Battletech or something like I'm that. Thinking like all those old I'm thinking... I'm not thinking anime. I'm thinking cartoons. Thundercats. That's, yeah. that's anime. Is it? Yeah. I don't know, man. I call yeah, BS bro. on that. There is Thundercats originally anime. See, this is where if we were an actual podcast, we'd be like... <laughs> Hey, Mikey, look it up. <laughs> look up. It's Thundercats in the anime. <laughs> you know, I've never, and just real quick sidebar, I've never liked the whole concept of looking stuff up when you're having a conversation with somebody. I know, and I argue with you about that I all the time. I hated it, and I've always hated it. Even before Google became a thing, like, I've we always had a problem with that. We'd be drunkenly <laughs> sitting there, and like people will get close to arguments. I'll be like, guys, we got supercomputers in our pockets. You'd be like, no, I won't look it up on principle. Just, like dude come on <laughs> i like the conversation part it's like what keeps me alive no you're just a borderline ludite okay i don't this, this is the same man who for the past 15 years has gone out of his way will drive an hour out of his way to buy something because he refuses to use amazon so 
great point. That is totally true. But what the hell is a Luddite? <laughs> no idea <laughs> those are like those anti-tech people that are like technology is the devil <laughs> you like know you know what? those people that are like i can't live in the city because the radio waves give me headaches like <laughs> those people uh, the 5g <laughs> is giving me cancer <laughs> 5g is the reason why i can't have children anymore okay all those 5g towers killed off my sperms i thought all it was because right? you got snipped <laughs> Guilt-free nuts all day, baby. <laughs> anyway. My I don't bad. even know where we are anymore. <laughs> My bad. We were talking about the cartoon dad. And we were arguing about if Thundercats was anime or not. Which <laughs> I strongly believe it is not. I will sit here and say, I don't believe Thundercats is anime. Put down your phone. <laughs> <laughs> we have supercomputers. Let me look it up. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> but you're going to get distracted. We're in the middle of a conversation. Yeah. You are correct. <laughs> Anyways, you were saying that your mom was raised off uh, on the TV. TV and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, and but there definitely wasn't a lot of kids programming out there. No, you had like sure. four channels. You had like uh-uh. ABC, uh, Fox. Uh, what was the other one? And NBC. Actually, yeah, because I watched a whole documentary about their three tone sound off thing. The <laughs> doom, doom, doom. I don't know why I watched a documentary, like that, but I did. <laughs> but it's I a do. dad thing to fall asleep on the couch <laughs> watching documentaries. <laughs> So I fall asleep watching stuff all the time. That is my thing. I know you told me and then you do the dad thing where you yell if anybody touches the TV. Yeah, I get this sense, you know, like I wake up like just immediately like, don't touch that. I'm just watching it. You're falling asleep (laughs) watching horrible dad depictions in media. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, it's normal for us, right? It is normal for us to, to kind of be, I mean, it's easy, right? Put your kids in front of the TV, let them watch something. Yeah. And and it keeps them distracted. It keeps them out of your way. You got to do stuff. But the what? if the dad figures are kind of a certain way, it bleeds into a lot of stuff as to what you expect. It bleeds into how they view you. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we've even talked about it before that we've had that idea in our head of the guy who clinks the tongue, the the. Yeah, yeah, that's all like together. that's all like commercials and sitcoms and stuff yeah. like that. That that idea of dads. Yeah, because my dad never did that shit. I'm surprised you didn't say they're called ads. <laughs> <laughs> they are called ads now. <laughs> I'm teaching my daughters commercials. <laughs> you're you're doing them a disservice. Kids are they're gonna say commercials to other kids, <laughs> and they'll be like, "My dad's one of those dumb TV dads. He always says commercials instead of ads. Yeah. He's not hip with it. <laughs> he doesn't understand the interwebs." My TV dads were Peter Griffin, yeah, Homer Simpson a little bit. I kind of give I got to give Homer a little credit though. Homer was actually a pretty decent depiction of a dad, even if he was a dumbass. So he, in the earlier seasons, yeah, yeah, for sure, he cared. He cared about his family. Yeah. He loved his family. That was pretty obvious. That episode where like, I can't remember what it was, but like um, Mr. Burns put up the sign that said, don't forget, you'll be here forever or something like that. And then it yeah. shows at the end of the episode that he put pictures of Maggie all over it. So it only said, do it for her. Yeah. But that shit gets me tearing up. No, no, it tears me up too. I, I've watched that I, like I feel you, Homer. a couple days ago, that episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got to stand up for my boy, Homer. He might be an idiot, but he's an idiot with a heart of gold. But that's the thing, right? So it, it's always like... These are well-meaning guys. Homer Homer Simpson had a had a good heart. I also grew up with Fred Flintstone. He was another yeah. one that I grew up with. He wasn't a dad from the outset. They started them off as just a couple, and then Pebbles came into the picture afterwards. Oh my god, you're right. Yeah, because the first that pilot episode, they picked up Dino, but they didn't have Pebbles. Yet. They didn't have Pebbles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fred Flintstone. I watched a lot of Flintstones when I was a kid, and I'm trying to think. There was there was at least one more. Um, but either way, regardless, I grew up with those guys and they, not, not uh Steve Smith from American dad or not, not Steve. Smith. I was older. Yeah. I, was, I was already like in my actually college years was Stan yeah. Smith. Yeah. And you know what? He did actually impact me. Holy shit. I'm he, thinking about he it was now. He's actually a pretty decent father figure. He wasn't an idiot. No, but he was too much, man. He was a little extra because he was very ardent in his beliefs yeah. but he was all full considering came from the same creator he was an actually decent father like a decent father figure he had a job he was good at his job you know he wanted the best for his family even if he went overboard because it was a cartoon but he wasn't a peter griffin he wasn't saying shut up meg you know? 
<laughs> well, Peter Griffin early too was a good dad. Like, no, oh, he was always a piece of crap. No, dude. Even in the early seasons, the early, he would like talk shit to, to Lois and stuff like that. The early, early seasons. Peter Griffin always like sort of learned a lesson at the end of things. Yeah, just to be a dick the next episode because you got to go back to status quo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I remember those guys growing up and I remember thinking to myself in that time frame, like these aren't real people. This isn't real stuff. Yeah. Right. And I'll kind of get into a little bit of a story now because it's relevant here. So there was a point in time where I, as like number one, was really small, right? Me and the wife, we were together. We just started kind of doing our own thing, living on our own, right? Trying to really set our nuclear family up. So number one would have been a little bit older than a baby. And number two was on the way, right? So, or we were thinking about number two. We were trying to set up our nuclear family, really break ourselves off, start being together. Yeah. You know, being the one that did the, I I worked, obviously. And I was the dad of the household. And I kind of let her take care of the household stuff, take care of the kids. And number one got to go to school a little early. So she managed the school stuff. She did all the dishes, all the cleaning. I was just really in charge of working. There got to a point where I felt like I didn't know how to do stuff. Yeah, you touched on that last time Mm -hmm. too. I didn't know how to do anything. Number two came along. I changed diapers. That was pretty much it. When it came to actually knowing and being competent and actually helping out, I was not there. That has kind of hurt your pride when you realize that, right? Like, oh, crap. It did. It did. And the the reason why it hurt my pride was because I was thinking about those cartoon dads. What was the other one? You said there was another one that affected you. Kind of Hank Hill, but not really. Hank Hill was actually a pretty good depiction. Hank Hill was a very good depiction. And the I used to hate that show, but now that I go back and look at it, like he it's was a pretty really good, good. His biggest fault was that he thought Bobby was weird, but at the same time, he realized that he had to accept him. He tried hard. Yeah. And he tried really hard. And that kid is weird. That boy ain't right. <laughs> that boy ain't right. I say that all the time <laughs> for number one. <laughs> but either way, regardless, it you was... You were thinking about them. Yeah. It was really the Peter Griffin was in my head. Right? And you didn't want to be that. Yo, it made me freaking crazy. <laughs> and that was what drove me so much to try to be able to do everything. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's nuts. That these, not only our own fathers made these impacts on us, but these horrible depictions of fathers yeah, imprinted on us. Yeah. And it stuck with us, you know? And I, I can't remember what it was. It was like we were hanging out in my mom's house and just talking and hanging out. And my mom made some offhanded comment about, oh, you know, you know, Frank, Frank the Tank doesn't really know anything about that sort of stuff. I remember looking over, not really being mad. I mean, that's my mom. What am I going to say? Right. But like thinking about it, it just, it, it sat with me for a second. And I had that kind of, uh, what's that, what's that phrase they say? Like, uh, you had something stuck in your craw. Like it was just there and messing with you. Right. I've never heard that (laughs) phrase. (laughs) I'll start saying it. We'll bring it back. (laughs) It really stuck in my craw, bro. Like, like for real. I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> My craw was like real stuffed up with this shit. <laughs> Define craw. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we eat them in New Orleans or we avoided them in New Orleans? <laughs> that was craw dads, craw dads. <laughs> Let's not even talk about New Orleans. Bro. <laughs> so much weird stuff happened out there. But anyway, my crawdads were real stuffed up with this shit. We met a real life bard in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say that story? <laughs> we'll save that for another day. We'll save it for another day. Whenever we have a, a, a guy's night out uh, episode. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. No, you know what? We'll tell that story if we ever eventually do video versions of the podcast. Because I feel like you need to reenact that story. Yeah, that's true. You need to. A- you need to show what what the bard to explain did. Explain what the bard was doing. <laughs> oh man! So yes, it really it, it really got up in my crawdaddies, dude. Like for real, for real. 
it got real up in there and I couldn't do anything about it because they were right. Yeah, that's the worst. I had spent about five years just letting that sort of stuff slide. Sure, (laughs) she can handle it. Sure, she can handle it. Sure, she can handle it. It was probably just sitting in the back of your head and you never really thought about it until somebody brought it up and then it was like, ah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I mean, I was working long hours, you know, when you start off in an industry, you always get to put in extra time and extra effort and all that stuff. So I thought I was doing the right thing. Um, yeah. Working till 8 p.m. at the office, you know. So, yeah, I, w- I thought I was doing the good dad thing. I was putting in a lot of hours. I was working nine to eight, you know, just trying to get something off the ground, putting in work, making sure I was the, the good employee, the good dad, right? Doing my job. So that I could get promotion, so I could get considered for raises, those that all that sort of bullshit. Everything society said you need to do to be a good dad. Right. And then on the opposite side, there's my mom and my wife talking shit about me, about not being able to take care of the kids, because it's true, because I'm never there. And you know what's messed up? They're talking shit, but they probably are not expecting more from you because... You know, media depiction, society, everything says, well, that's what he's supposed to do. We're just going to bitch about it. That's what we do. Right. But right. we're not going to expect him to do better. But it's funny, you know. Ha, yeah. Ha, 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 you yeah. Know? <laughs> it's always been this way. You know, they neglect us. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. And it, I mean, really, like, really got up in those craw daddies. <laughs> like, all up in your craw. All up in my craw, bro. And I went full circle, opposite way. Learn how to make that skirt steak with the rosemary leaves on it. Learn how to make the skirt steak. Learn how to cook. That's when I started to learn how to cook. That's when I started to learn how to do hair. That's when I started to learn how to do... Don't do your kid's hair. Don't. It's terrible. I I mean, I'm bad. I'm bad at it. My stepdad used to cut my hair. (laughs) No, not cut their hair. Number two is a girl. Oh, just do... Oh, yeah. Just do the hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 (laughs) Okay, I thought you talked... Because there's times I went to school with a haircut my stepdad gave me, and y'all would mercilessly rag on me. (laughs) Mercilessly. What happened to that line? (laughs) What's up with your edge? (laughs) I'm pretty sure one time someone was like, yo, who gave you that edge? Somebody with Parkinson's? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they was really... They were really bad. (laughs) <laughs> they deserve whoever whoever was doing your hair deserved the roasting <laughs> he was a mechanic not a barber <laughs> you need to tell him to wipe the grease off before you just cut your hair <laughs> I can't even fucking say anything because it was bad haircuts I mean Joey Two Bananas would come in here and just say like don't say nothing <laughs> <laughs> all right you earned that one good one because you're not wrong oh man but yeah definitely definitely was a big problem for me i mean man i spent another year or two working up my skills and feverishly like trying to break out of that mold not even not even th- for wifey not even because of what my mom said but because I was so scared of becoming the Peter Griffin. Yeah. And I hated the idea That's of crazy, being that way. Bro. Hated it. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going to be. And I and I would tell myself that I'm not going to be like Peter Griffin. Really? Yeah. Just because I grew up with that image of the bumbling dad being Damn. like Peter Griffin. And it was so, you know, I guess it was that formative time when we were that young. Yeah. That it yeah. really stuck with me. That's crazy, bro. I, because I, I'll say I never had that experience on my end. But you know, I started having kids a lot later. I never had the "don't be like the Peter Griffin dad" things. I had the opposite effect. So I grew up watching a lot of uh, Nick and Knight. Oh, okay, yeah. So I grew up watching like Ricky Ricardo and Bill Cosby and uh, Eddie Munster. No, Eddie Munster was a son. Herman Munster. Herman Munster. Yeah. Stuff like like those old school dads from like the black and white shows and stuff like that. They were all so freaking perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes, they were. So they were, it was either you had the bumbling dads or you had these perfect paragons of virtue. Now, not the seventh heaven version where it was like, (laughs) yo, let's make this guy literally (laughs) Jesus with seven kids in the middle of America. All right. Like, or what about the, um, the dad from full house? Actually, he wasn't too bad of a depiction. He wasn't too bad. I don't. I, I don't remember that much. Full House. Oh, uh, because he was a single father. Um, that was the whole thing. Like he was a single father, and then he asked his high school friend to move in, and that was Uncle Jesse. 
And then I forget how the other guy, uh, Dave Coulier's character, I forget how he showed up. I think he was a friend too. Yeah. That was the whole thing. It was like three dudes that were like, well, I got to raise these kids. Help me raise these kids. So he wasn't that bad. Three grown ass dudes living with your daughters. Fuck that. Holy Fuck shit. all that yeah. mess. <laughs> Dude, I love you. I would not ask you to come in here and live and help me raise my daughters. No, fuck out of here. Me neither. I never even thought of that, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Holy shit. <laughs> three yeah. dudes? Nah, no, well, two dudes. But you know what? No, three. Well, not counting the dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like two just Two, two additional dudes. But you know what? That was the thing. It was such, I think there was a certain point in the 90s where they tried to push back against that dads can't be or men can't be dads or men don't know how to raise kids things because there was a few movies like that where it was like all of a sudden like the dad had to learn stuff and had to suddenly step up and be a dad or random guys like three men uh what was it three men and baby that movie where it was like um i think the dude with the mustache i think i can't remember but it was like three guys who had to raise a baby i can't remember the thing and And they always suck at it yeah there was a lot of shows like that where it was basically like men had to learn how to be parents because i think they realized that there were so many bad depictions of dads it was like well we're show dads being dads or men learning to be dads but it was still like starting from that conception of well guys don't know shit like look at daddy daycare uh do you remember that movie i uh, vaguely it was like eddie murphy and i can't remember the other guy but um the whole thing where they they were two dads who started a daycare and i remember there was one scene where like they were like oh you're daddy daycare oh we're gonna drop our kids off and they were like where the women at I was like, no, it was just us. They were like, two guys are going to watch the kids. They were like, yeah, we're dads. They were like, oh, no, we're not going to uh, leave the kids here. It was like, because you can't trust dads to not fuck up. Right. That is true. So You're I think right. there was a period where they did have that kind of a pushback on that. And they tried to show dads in better light. Well, and, you know, the Ricky Ricardo and the old the old school dads they, that were paragons of virtue, well, I feel like they were paragons of virtue, yes, but look how not present they were. Yeah, they always showed them like in their study, at the dinner table, reading a newspaper. Yeah, completely just like not dealing with any kid stuff. Yeah, even uh, Bill Cosby, he was in his practice and stuff like that for the Cosby Show. So while these guys, those were the ones that I measured myself to. Oh, I got to be like that. I got to be the Herman Munsters. I got to be the Bill Cosby. You're right. They weren't. They were working men, usually with stay-at-home wives, and they were there to be the good dad when they were there. And then they went off and did their stuff. Thinking about it, though, you know who one of the best depictions of a father in TV, at least the time we were growing up, was what? Carl Winslow. Get out of my house, Steve. <laughs> Carl Winslow was one of the best depictions of a father uh, on TV, and I'll stand by that. You know, I he was present. He had a hard job as a cop, but he was always present. There was episodes where he was sitting at the table helping kids with homework and stuff like that. True. Like, the only thing you could say about him was he was a dick to Urkel. <laughs> to Steve Urkel. But, I mean, a... who wouldn't be a dick to him? Bro. Some weird little kid with suspenders all the way up his ass, like, sniffing around your daughter. Bro. I know. And he was all over her, too. Yo. He was all over her. All over her. Uh, yeah, I can't. Plus, the poor man was henpecked. He had his wife there. His his It was either his mother or his wife's mother. And then his uh his sister-in-law. No. Remember, all three of them were living in his house. I don't really remember that one that well. Uh, I used but to watch I, it all the time. Yeah, I, it was I his, it. It was, I think it was his mother, or no, it was his mother, his wife, and then his wife's sister were all living in the house. Oh, no. So that's that like, man was, that man was a paragon of virtue. That's like you, man. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. You're that's not wrong. like you. I got the wife and then the sister-in-law. Watch it. A couple of years, you're going to have one of these neighborhood boys come around. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Except oh with, no! <laughs> Except with all these these new names now, it's gonna be like get out of my house. I don't know. Uh, Aiden, <laughs> get out of my house, Aiden, Jaden, <laughs> Aiden, Jaden, Kylo Red. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. So like, I I I was always comparing myself to those uh, good dads. Um, even uh, even the dads that weren't really dads, like Uncle Phil. Well, he was a dad to his kids, but yeah. like he was a good example of a father figure. But he was also a, a vastly successful lawyer living in L.A. So, or Bel Air. Yeah. They had shmoney, bro. Yeah, they had shmoney. hella shmoney. Uh, so it's like I, on the flip side, you were comparing yourself to the bad dad examples. I was mm-hmm. always comparing myself to like the good dad examples. Like, oh man, like I 
hope I'm one of those dads that can sit at the table and do the homework. Or I hope I'm one of those dads that can sit there and calmly explain to their kid this, that, or another. And I guess I'm not being like the seventh heaven dad, or I guess I'm not being like Uncle Phil, you know? Like, right. And that's hard to live up to. Do, do you think that they, and I don't, I don't really remember, or I don't think I've seen it, where they've shown those dads to have any sort of vulnerability or any sort of moments where they felt human. So I want to say in the 50s, 50s, 60s, those, the only vulnerability they showed was that they'd get annoyed at their wives. Like Ricky Ricardo was always getting annoyed at Lucy. Yeah, right? Lucy was a pain in the ass. Yeah, but that was his only vulnerability. Other than that, he was like Mr. Perfect Band Leader, right? It was oh, just like, Lucy, Lucy you got some splaining to, to do. Why is there a dead people? No. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I feel like in my mind, at some point, like, it was like, Lucy, did you kill these people? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Vita Vita Vegemite. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. But no, like, oh, so that, that was his thing, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Or, you know. Um, with Uncle Phil, I think, the, and Carl Winslow, both of them being black dads, I think the only like weakness they ever gave them was those occasional like there's still racism episodes, like where they were like, you know, mm, yeah. even as powerful as I am and as and you know being a cop and all this, I still experience racism. So they had that. That was like their not a downfall, but like the negative of them. They were like, you know, you can be the best dad, but somebody's still going to treat you this way because of the color of your skin. But beyond mm-hmm. that, they didn't really show negatives to these people. Like they were just perfect dads with wacky stuff going on around them or their kids were crazy, but you know, they didn't well, have downfalls. And you know, I guess that's kind of interesting, right? Cause if you think about it, doesn't it seem like the dads that were perfect or not fully present were not the focus of the show it seems like the yeah actually it seems like the ones that were the bad dads with the exception of hank hill it seems like the ones that were the bad dads were kind of the main characters and it was funny they were funny because oh look at this stupid thing that they're doing look at this thing they're bumbling through like they, yeah. they they don't got it going on. They don't know what they're doing. But yeah. they've got a heart of gold and they still try and blah 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 blah. Yeah, no, I think that works. I, I think you're right. I think that's what it was. Like if they weren't the focus, then you could afford to make them look good because the other person was probably kind of the goofball. Like right. Lucy was the goofball, right? Yeah. Or Urkel was the goofball in, in um Family Matters or uh Will Smith in mm-hmm. Fresh Prince, right? Like the uh, dad was the grounding like, yeah. I'm going to tell you why this thing was wrong. I'm going to show you what you should have done in this situation. I got one. Because you just sparked something in my mind. I was going through all these dads in my head. And I was trying to think of one where the dad wasn't, where it was an ensemble cast. So the dad wasn't the main focus. But he also wasn't like, he wasn't perfect. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. The dad from Dinosaurs, he wasn't the main character. It was an ensemble because sometimes it was the baby. Sometimes it was the son. It was, it was almost like family sitcom right yeah i remember that but he was kind of a bumbling dad but not really he was just kind of a not crazy smart guy but he was a regular worker dude i think he yeah, worked at like a, a blue collar or something like that yeah, yeah yeah so there you go there was a dad who wasn't the star but uh, but wasn't a paragon so like he wasn't because like peter griffin's the star so he has to be an idiot right yeah uncle phil isn't the star so he can afford to be that paragon of virtue because the star is the entertaining one there you go the dinosaur's dad None of them mm. were really the star, but he wasn't an idiot, but he wasn't also a paragon of virtue because there's plenty of episodes where he messed up. Too bad that show had the worst ending in television <laughs> history where they got uh, off by the freaking meteor. <laughs> yeah. They, and wasn't that after like off. three different world ending events that they somehow caused and then they were like huddled alone in the cold and then the meteor hits? <laughs> Just got burnt to a crisp. <laughs> That's a freaking kid show, man. It's and like, you know what was crazy? I think in one of the episodes, the dad's like, hey, dad. Uh, the son's like, hey, dad, why does our calendar count down? What's it counting down to? <laughs> I remember the, the kids were like, radical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And the baby hit the dad and say, not the mom, not the mama. <laughs> But that was, I I got off topic there, but not really. That was the, 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 the was, that was on topic, man. That was on topic. I'm always on topic, yo. 
I I mean, I guess that's, you know, it, it kind of depends on when you were wa- like what era of TV you're watching too. Cause yeah. I, I watched a lot of TV when I was 10 and up, I'd say. Like, yeah, that, I, I'd say, you know, I'd say like seven and up, eight and up for me. Yeah. Man, but I was watching, I wasn't watching a whole lot of older stuff. I was watching like, you know, family guy in my well, room. Well, you didn't have or, a TV in your room, right? Growing up. I did. I did uh, get one eventually. Cause that's where I would, cause like I would sneak it on when my parents weren't around and yeah. the only thing on was like Nick at night. Yeah, so it was like, Oh, Nick at night. And it was like the Beverly Hillbillies and stuff like yeah. that, or, you know, like the monsters. And then the porn channel that was like the the channel ninety eight or something where you could channel make out the squiggles. Channel ninety nine, where sometimes you can make out the squiggles, yeah. <laughs> or you'd go to like MTV and it'd be like girls gone wild, yeah. After a certain time, <laughs> for for three payments of nineteen ninety nine, you can get this hot, wet co-ed tape. Yeah. The random bars over their titties that had the prices on them. Yeah. Busted a couple nuts to those. <laughs> could definitely say that <laughs> oh my god but you know what else i find kind of interesting right so Go for it. other than other than uh <laughs> bars, bars. <over> press. <laughs> <laughs> no other than like the american media that we kind of consumed as kids right mm-hmm. there was also uh dads in anime I feel like is a I weird spot going there. Yeah, man. I knew you were going there and I actually wanted to go there too. Cause I have a really good example that I wanted to cover. Please, please elaborate. So going off that whole paragons of virtue kind of thing, Goku and Vegeta. Goku and Vegeta. Cause hmm. Goku's supposed to be the good dad, right? He's supposed to be no. the loving dad. Well, he's, he's the main character. He's supposed to be the, the good father, right? Father yeah. figure. He's dead most of the time and abandons his families to go train and fight, right? Goku. <laughs> Vegeta for being a, a dude who blew up pan- planets and like mercilessly <laughs> killed half the cast at one point. When he was redeemed and became a dad, he was a really good dad, bro. It was Nappa that killed half the cast at Vegeta's behest. <laughs> okay. Technically, the Cybermen so, took out two guys. Technically, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> no, actually, the Cybermen only took out one. One, yeah, I'm trying yeah. yeah. But and then uh, Chao Tzu pl- took himself out. <laughs> who planted the Cybermen? It was Nappa. So I'm like, come on. <laughs> we just lost everybody who's not like a millennial that watches anime. I thought that was our focus. The millennial dads. <laughs> <laughs> our analytics show the most people who watch are like 45 plus oh cool yeah I'm, I'm down with that i can't wait for that time but yeah so vegeta was like the horrible anti-villain right uh who became an anti-hero or a villain who became an anti-hero but he ended up being a great dad he would train with his son and like when his son was in danger like lost his stuff super powered up and went out and take out take care of him meanwhile goku's like hey that's a world-ending threat over there uh i just beat him up but I want you to fight him, son, so I'm going to heal him and then, like, throw you, you out there. Let you have a, a crack at him. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> you got this, bro. You got this. I mean, I could kind of understand that, too. I've done that a couple times. Like, not world-ending threats, but, like, hey, here's this difficult thing, but I put it back to the way it was so that you can have a shot at it. I think that's different. That's teaching your son to get over hardships. As opposed to, hey, here have a fight to, to <laughs> a fight to the death with a creature who might just like stab you with his tail and like suck out your innards. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I, I I gotta I gotta push back because I, I I did want to bring it to that. Just I thought um, Vegeta was the more interesting father, and I think that's because he was a he wasn't perfect, and he wasn't fl- he was flawed. He was yeah. he was closer to a normal p- depiction of a father, right? But I kind of got to push back on the anime thing because you think about it, most anime had the issue where like parents were missing. Yes, like and there was no real parents in most animes. Well, yes. Well, here's the thing, right? So what I was gonna get to is that if there are parents in an anime, it's usually the mom that's important. The dad either in a lot of stuff is either not present, barely a part of the story, or is like an antagonist, one of the bad guys. I don't know. I'd argue uh, otherwise. Really? Yeah. How so? Um, Well, maybe in earlier anime, Mm -hmm. but I'd say the anime we grew up around, uh, take the big three, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Naruto, Bleach, 
uh, One Piece. Naruto, his father was dead, but he was a major impact on the story. Came back as a, like a zombie warrior at one point to help out and stuff like that, but was a major positive influence that he chased after. Yeah, but he he wasn't even there. But he he can't help it that he died. Can Fine, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that one. Bleach, his dad was always there supporting him from the back. Never revealed that he also had powers until the end. And even then, he was like, "All right, now that it's a world-ending threat, I got to show you that I got powers too and like train you." But he was always a good dad, always there supporting his son. That's supporting him how? He was off in like Soul Society for like a month and he didn't even bother thinking about where he was. Maybe his son he, was deep in guts. He, he, <laughs> he drop kicked the one day for missing dinner and that was like the one thing he did. And then he's gone for like three months. <laughs> how you smooth that over? Fine. Well, one Piece is actually a horrible example. Never mind. Yeah, his dad is like uh, uh, a freaking war criminal. <laughs> yeah. The world is more important than raising my son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But either way, or even some of the funnier, like, slice of the life animes and, and, and all that, like, you see the dad just sitting there on the table reading a newspaper. <laughs> well, good luck out there. <laughs> and it's just like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> you know what that tells me? It doesn't matter whether you're from an Eastern culture or a Western culture. Everybody thinks dads suck. And so they're just portrayed horribly. <laughs> But you know what, bro? It's not even just a movie like TV. It's like video games and books mm-hmm. and movies, and all media representation representations of dads. Even music. That's where I wanted to go earlier. Even music, because growing really? up, I know both of us grew up listening to hip hop and R and B, right? Yeah, for sure. How many rap songs? Um, when they're like not the ones that play on the radio, but you buy like a, a guy's album or whatever, and there's a song usually in there somewhere that's like talking about how horrible oh. their fathers yeah. were and stuff. You know, like. Nas had Papa was a player. Mm. Jay Z had uh, it was him and um, was it Memphis Bleak? I can't remember. You know what song I'm talking about, right? Oh no, man, no. he was like basically like they went in, they were like cursing out their dads. He was like, "Yo, you were never here, always locked up, always doing bids. I needed you, so I like going hard." I think it was Meth Bleak who was Ooh. on it. Dude sounded like he was cry, like cry rapping at his dad. Like there are so man. many songs like that, right? And and that's the media we're consuming. Mm. And then that just tells us that, you know, and when you're well, depend- dads are either not there or failed you. They're bumbling idiots mm-hmm. or they're paragons of virtue that are never fucking around. Yeah. So, like, how are we supposed to grow up, you know, especially if, you know, you had a father who was working all the time. I know my dad worked all the time, bro. I think I said it previously, like up until we bought the house, my dad bought the house that we grew up in. I don't have memories of him because he was always working. Yeah. So, like, we're consuming these representations of fathers and what does that get us yeah man. you know like just a confused idea of either a dad's an idiot a dad's not around or a dad's somebody who's gonna fail you and walk out on you you know yeah papa was a rolling stone kind of deal you know rolling stone hey you know it's weird that you're talking about this and i'm thinking about it now i spent a lot of time with my biological dad during summer breaks right as a kid because he was in New York, we were down here, so that's when we, we would see him. And he had a nine to he had he had a job, he had a yeah. legit job. But I remember when he would go to work, all the kids were stuck in the house. We were all running around doing our own thing. His wife was in the house too, holed up in her room, watching her novellas or whatever she liked to do. Her stories, her stories. <laughs> <laughs> her mother was in the house cooking all the time, constantly making some soup or whatever. And he would come home and it'd be two seconds. Hold up. I got to stop you. Yeah. (laughs) She was just constantly making soup. (laughs) Like she didn't know how to cook other stuff. Just constantly making soup. Yeah, man. (laughs) Like seriously, there was a soup of the day that she would just be making (laughs) all day. We'd eat it for lunch. We'd eat it for dinner. And it was just a big old pot of soup. I mean, it... It's an Ecuadorian that, that's thing. An old school, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. that's an old school. That That's, uh, we, we were poor and it's cheaper to boil water and throw stuff yeah. in it. Yeah. <laughs> that's an old school mentality. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, that just, like, caused, <laughs> the way you said that, like it was a hundred percent normal. Yeah. Like, yeah, she was just cooking soup. I was like, huh? All day. <laughs> yeah. All day. <laughs> I, <laughs> we need it for lunch. We need it for dinner. She would start cooking it after breakfast. <laughs> It's like that one soup that anytime it just gets low, she just adds more soup. So it's the same soup. 
Every day, bro. Every freaking day. <laughs> What's it? It's the soup from last week plus a little bit of yesterday's soup. We're good. I don't even know how often that pot got cleaned. <laughs> it probably I, never I, did. I don't want to know. <laughs> it probably had. It, it was a. Uh, it was the century soup. <laughs> but, but either way, but dad would come home. Right, dad would come home, take off his shoes, throw them somewhere. It was one of the kids' jobs. To take the shoes. To take the shoes. Yeah. There was enough of us that, like, somebody was going to do it. Who knows? He would sit there, watch baseball for a little bit, eat dinner, watch some more baseball, and fuck off. Yeah. That's how it was. Because that's how, you know, that was that. That was their depiction of a father. Yeah. Like, you you could ask him something for sure, but you weren't really going to get his whole attention. He was somewhere else. Yeah. It it was other people's jobs to deal with the six kids that he decided to have. Tradition and the the media they consumed back in those days said a father's job is to be the breadwinner. That's it. You're there to be the breadwinner and smack up the kids when they acted up. Other than that, your wife was supposed to change it. There were there are men that are grandfather's ages and stuff like that that have never changed a diaper in their lives. Yeah. Had like eight or nine kids, never changed a single diaper. My father in law was like that. Yeah. Like I'm and pretty sure that's how my grandparents were too. <laughs> like it, it, uh, Meanwhile, I'm I've been changing all these diapers. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I see it. I see you. I see you and, and some of our homies suffering over here. <laughs> like everybody's keeping track of how many diapers they're changing. That shit sucks. I I avoid it. I avoid it. Nah, I I felt bad. I, so I I I changed with with Lola. I changed almost all of her diapers with Chi Chi. Not as much because it was just busier. I was usually dealing with the older while my wife was dealing with the younger. Yeah. Actually, before we started recording, I don't know if you saw when I came down. I found like two diapers that we must have missed. Like they got moved around while we were changing diapers before we closed them. So I brought yeah. them down here and tossed them in the <laughs> diaper genie. <laughs> I was like, well, we can't have this diaper hanging around up here. Yeah, that happens to us all the time. Like, I'll, I'll just throw diapers on the floor and I'll be like, I'll remember to get that. And then something happens and then I don't get it. And blah, blah, blah. So I'll usually change the one in the in the living room, uh, which is on the opposite side of the, the room from the bathroom when we're down here. And the other day, my sister-in-law was walking past and I had just changed a diaper and I usually take it and I'll toss it towards the bathroom where the diaper genie is. <laughs> I miss pegging her in the head by like a quarter of an inch. She was like, what? And I was like, oh, you're lucky because that one was a big dookie. That was a, that was a big dookie. That was a big dookie. That was, that was dookie. dookie. Hey, dookie. You, you gave me shit for saying dookie earlier. <laughs> That's, That's why I said right. it. Brought it back. Brought it back. Brought it back. Brought it back. <laughs> dookie's it's hard. A, dookie's a non-offensive term. But either way, <laughs> that's kind of crazy, right? Like, if you think about it, because I think modern depictions of dads are doing a much better job. Oh, my God. Much 100%, better. bro. Like, I'm not going to talk about Caillou's dad because that guy looks like a fucking wuss. Doesn't Caillou have cancer? <laughs> <laughs> That's the little bald the boy, bald right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Can I go on a random tangent? Yes, please. Do you remember the show Little Bill? Yeah, I do, actually. Why did nobody ever say Little Bill had cancer? He was just as bald. <laughs> because Little Bill wasn't a piece of shit, kid. <laughs> like Caillou is. No, you know what it was? Little Bill had eyebrows. <laughs> Caillou did it. <laughs> but um, no, 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 you're right. So like my, my daughter's watching some show now. Uh, Lola, she's watching some show called Fire Buddies. Okay. You ever seen that? I have not actually. Uh, it's on Disney. Um, and it's some weird mix of like a regular like TV world, like cartoon TV world, uh-huh. but like with cars. So like think of like a regular TV cartoon kids show where like regular people are walking around, but then like they have yeah. like living cars and they ride on those living cars and the cars will talk to them. So do you think the tailpipe is the butthole? <laughs> Or is it like the vagina? You know, there's an argument to be had about that because I, I forget one of the Cars movies. They were like, look at those tail lights or something like that. Mm-hmm. But then their headlights are their eyes. It's like, eh, wait, what? Ooh. But anyways, she watches this show <laughs> Fire Buddies and I never really pay attention to it. But the other day I saw I paid attention to it and like they all ride on like fire trucks and ambulances and stuff like that. And yeah. the son and his fire truck saved somebody or but to do that they ended up losing the race they were in and he wanted to win the race because i think they were some prize and he was going to give it to his dad for christmas and he didn't and so after they were doing that dad's like you did so great son you you saved the day blah, blah, blah. you didn't need us adults here he was like yeah 
I got to go, dad, I got to do some last minute shopping and left. And the dad's like, what's wrong? And then his friends were like, oh, he wanted to give you the trophy or whatever. I was like, oh. And so then like they, they showed back up at the house and the dad's like, hey. And he had like a talk with the kid being like, you know, yeah, I, I like this or whatever. But he's like, the, the greatest thing is you and. And, you know, and the fact that you're doing all this makes me proud. And it was like, that's a good depiction of a father, right? Like, and I'm like, cool. So now my kids are getting those better depictions yeah. as opposed to Peter Griffin, like farting in Meg's face, face. you know, like <laughs> shut up, Meg, shut up, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, I will speak volumes. I will, will sing praises of, of Bluey. Bluey. And the dad and Bluey, you know, the bandit healer. Yeah. That show, Dad. I love that show. I will sit there and watch that show. Oh yeah, the I do have some beef with it because number two gets real like extra, like yeah, like she, climbing Mount Daddy and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, she'll she tries to play all the Bluey games and yeah. she tries to get me involved. I think I've even mentioned it before on the podcast. Yeah, we talked about it. Um, yeah, the the problem with Bluey is they're such a great depiction of not only the dad but the adults in general like adults. i'm pretty sure there was an episode where like the mom was like breaking down crying yeah and like somebody was like you're doing the best you can you're doing yeah. a great job and like that it was like that that made me tear up i was like sometimes you need to hear that yeah <laughs> but i think the issue with the dad is the dad is such a great parent on bluey and he spends all his time playing with the kids and doing this and that and then it was like he, it, make, it, he makes us look like ass. Yeah, it almost goes back full circle to that paragon of virtue, but they show him having downsides. So he's a well balanced dad, but he's just such a fun dad that it's just like, well, I look like a dick because my daughter come in and Lola's like, Daddy, come play with me. And I'm like, baby, I got a meeting. Get out. <laughs> you need to get. Fuck get. <laughs> because last time you were in a meeting, they yelled at me. So you got to get. <laughs> yeah. oh, but I want to climb Mount Dad. That one gets me, the climbing Mount Daddy, because I'll be sitting there and they'll be like, climbing me i'm like yo this isn't a cartoon yeah i am not so much bigger than you that you can climb on top of me you just stepped on my glasses that i spent a decent amount of money on yeah no, number one does it for fun yeah. and he's like he, he's like i'm gonna climb you dad I'm like you're way too big for this shit. actually he did that to me last time we were out like yeah. he just like kind of clung onto my leg i was like bro you're almost like a full-grown man yeah. get off of me <laughs> You're a little too tall. For this you were shit. almost up to my shoulder. Yeah. Stop, Stop like it. wrapping your legs around my leg. Can you get off of me? I think he does it to mess with us. Like I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt that at all. But I just felt so awkward. I was like, dude, you're almost a full grown man. Get off me. Yeah, the, the bandit healer kind of smashes on us. And then like it today, I I gave the kids a day off from school. I don't know why. What a horrible father. I know. Dude, fucking skewer me, bro. Flame me alive. <laughs> but I was just like, you know what? School year's almost done. Like, I hope none of their teachers are listening to this. <laughs> Screw those teachers. You would. The one with the fat butt. <laughs> the one that That's, you always talk the about. Administrator. Yeah, we were at a we were at a ceremony thing the other day and I I was pointing her out to the wifey. I was like, yo, that's the guy, look. Look, that's the guy. That's the dump truck. <laughs> that's the guy with the dump truck ass. Frankie the Tank is straight. <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, you can you can be straight and call out a guy with a dumpy. With a right, full guys, ass bakery. I might put this on the pole. That's another pole, right? Can you be straight <laughs> and call out if another man got a badonka donk? <laughs> People don't say badonka donk anymore. It's, you did have I a date full, myself? You sure did. A badonka donk. <laughs> Does he got dumps like a truck, truck, truck? I was like, what, what, what? It's, it's a, you, you got a dump truck ass or a full bakery or something along those like or caked up. Here's the poll. Caked up. Here's the poll. Frankie the Tanky thinks it's all right to call out if another man's butt is thick with three C's. <laughs> like, like, like a cheese just cake factory napkin. napkin. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> or do I have to give the obligatory no homo beforehand? Yo, you're not allowed to say that. That dates you. <laughs> oh yeah, it does. Oh fuck. Yeah, that that dates you. That uh, that makes you homophobic saying uh, that, bro. I'm not homophobic. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a good media depiction of a father. We're media now, bro. This is mediaception. I don't give a shit. I, I'm not. <laughs> 
I'm not. I'm extra selfish. <laughs> If there were an extra selfish dad, which I don't think there is. I don't think I've seen that. Peter Griffin's probably the closest to a selfish dad in media. But he's like bumbling. He's like a bumbling idiot. No, Cleveland from the Cleveland Cleveland show. Yeah, you know what? He's horribly selfish in that show. You're right. You're absolutely right. Which is is actually kind of horrible. The first animated black father is one of the most selfish depictions of a father in TV. Is he the first animated black father? I'm pretty sure. I can't think of another one. I mean, is Seth MacFarlane animated Black Father? I mean, he's not even voiced by a black guy, I think. <laughs> I think he's voiced by a white guy. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> uh, I think he's the first animated Black Father that, like, on a primetime show that I could think of. Interesting. Did yeah, you no, think he... of anyone? There was no dad in um the Fat Albert show, was there? No. Yeah. No, it would be Bill Cosby showing up at, like... No, the, you know what? Um... Proud family dad. But he was an amazingly selfish father, too. Yeah. He was actually a horrible father. Yeah, he kind of was. If the the mom had it going on. If she had a badonka. The mom had cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, flipped, you flipped the script on me, you bastard. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> you flipped the script on me. <laughs> you dumb bin schmeckeldorf. schmeckeldorf. <laughs> Yeah, the dad was actually kind of horrible now that I think about it. He was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. He would talk shit to his wife and to his mom. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar mama. (laughs) Sugar mama. (laughs) I love the, I love the uh, horribly racist uh, sugar mama's man, the Spanish dude. He would just, oh, he would, he, wasn't his name like Pappy, Poppy, or something I like think that? Poppy? So yeah, Poppy. And then he would like—he <laughs> was like an old Cuban uh, <laughs> stereotype. It's like, he even wore like, Guayabera. Like, yeah, he's like Ricky Ricardo, aged up by like fifty <laughs> years. <laughs> but hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it a racist depiction, or does that look like all of our grandfathers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be us in like 30 years, bro. I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually working on my Spanish accent. Like, you know, I told I told uh, my wife that I was like, yo, when I'm like 50, 60 years old, I'm going to develop a Spanish accent. Yeah. <laughs> I want I want to have a grandson and be like, oh, yeah, mio. Oh, yeah, mio. <laughs> <Para aquí. laughs> Don't go around doing those things, man. You. <laughs> <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> what did I tell you? You fuck that shit up, man. Just stay home and play with your penis, your dingaling. <laughs> I'm doing Mexican. I'm not even. Doing it. Hey, hey, no tocar. No tocar tu huevos. <laughs> Actually, you know, my grandmother used to tell me right. when I was fucking around with shit in her house. She'd be like, Mira, stop touching stuff. Toca tu huevos. <laughs> you know what's funny, though? I remember you saying that a couple of times before. And I tell number one that all the time. Really? Yeah. He's like, yes. <laughs> I know it's terrible. No, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna be like, he, he, it's gonna be ingrained in him. And if he has going a son, back to episode two, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the things we pass on. Because sometimes he, he, I mean, these kids, they, they look at me for like to plan their day. Oh, if I can't get on electronics, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> if I can't play video games right now because you're limiting my time, what should I do, Dad? And then I tell number one, I don't know, man, just go somewhere and play with your balls. Go tug on your weeder for a little bit. He probably just looks at you like, huh? Yeah, he he rolls his eyes at me. You know what's fucked up, though? Uh, That sounds like something that the bumbling dad would say. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But But you know what? It's hard because we've ingrained that stereotype so much into us. But you know what? I kind of gave it up. I kind of gave up worrying about it so much. Probably and about the same time you gave up about worrying about not being your father's shadow, right? Yep, yeah. exactly around that time. Because I, I don't remember if I got to finish what I was saying about that time frame. Go ahead. But it 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 drove me to really take on a lot of responsibilities and learn how to do stuff, right? And then that kind of moved me into, okay, now I am doing all these things. And I've said it before, I've talked about it before, how I was killing myself by taking on so many responsibilities. I neglected to talk about that being afraid of being Peter Griffin was kind of a major driver for that, but it was. And then I ended up burning myself out because I did 
so much extra crap because I could, because I knew how after you, uh, I learned it. You went literally from one extreme to the other yeah. and you couldn't, you couldn't find the Jay Pritchett. Yeah. I couldn't <laughs> find the Jay Pritchett. I was bad. It was you bad from, news. You went from uh, Al, Bundy Al Bundy straight to seventh heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, on the outside, I was like, you gotta of, find your happy Jay Pritchett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the outside, I was I was I was playing tough, you know. Like, yeah, yeah I, I got this. Oh, what do you mean? Yo, you know, you cook now? Oh yeah, I cook. Oh yeah, I do this. Oh yeah, I do that. Oh yeah, I can do everything. Uh, don't worry about me. I I can do everything. I couldn't do everything. I could not do it. I couldn't. It's keep It's physically impossible. Yeah, I couldn't keep it. We're up. not those perfect ideal fifties dads, bro. And even the perfect ideal fifty dads did not do everything. The motherfuckers didn't do shit. Didn't do shit. They did not do shit. All they did was make more babies. They made babies. They hit them wives with them thick cakes. <laughs> they walked <laughs> They walked around outside of the house, and then they would show up, sit at the dinner table with a fucking newspaper that their kids would let them read. I can't read a newspaper to save my fucking life. I can't. <laughs> I get the Sunday paper, and I actually enjoy sitting there and reading it on Sunday. Call me weird if you want. I don't care. <laughs> Our neighbor used to give us the paper back when we lived in the apartments. I would read that shit religiously. <laughs> it, it it it's it's a little calming because yes, the news is always in your face all the time. But being able to like read it's different in print media, yeah. But it is really I'm gonna call you different. out. What you know why it's you like doing that, and you know why it's calming because that was ingrained in us in what a father does. Look at every depiction oh, of a father in media. No. <laughs> what from the fifties onwards? What did they always do while sitting at the dining room table? Read the favorite ding 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 <laughs> tell him what he won folks <laughs> a lifetime supply of doubting yourself <laughs> fuck you i'm <laughs> done i'm done with that shit <laughs> i will never be my own worst enemy again fuck that <laughs> five minutes later he became his own worst enemy again. <laughs> you gotta do it with the morgan freeman voice and he ended up being his enemy that is the worst morgan freeman <laughs> voice ever <laughs> Hey, you know what? Has Morgan Freeman ever played a father? He'd make a great father. The guy's played fucking God, I bet. I guess he's the father of us all. <laughs> he's played the, the father. The the and Holy sometimes Spirit. I wonder, what happened to my friend? The smash is on my <laughs> That was me just trying to repeat the one line from um, uh, Shawshank Redemption I can remember. <laughs> Probably didn't say it right. I don't remember Morgan Freeman being a dad in anything. He's always just been like the ancient old wise guy. Yeah. I don't remember. Like You know who's played a dad a few times? Who? Uh and he's played good dads and bad dads. Denzel Washington. Really? Actually, one of the best depictions of a father, and I think about this movie all the time, uh, John Q. It's Denzel Washington. And essentially his son, his heart was too big or something like that. And he couldn't get on the transplant. The insurance failed. Nothing would cover it. His son's going to die. And he's at his wit's end. Doesn't know what to do. Spoiler alert. He ends up taking a hospital hostage. Because what he wants them to do is a heart transplant from himself to his son. Ooh. Yeah. He's like, I'd rather, I, I'll die so my son can live. And I was like, that's a crazy. I can't like, watch that sort of thing. Man. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I could watch that. that as a father now. No. But that that movie stuck with me for a long time. Actually, hold up. That man has done a lot of good depictions of fathers. Um, Do you remember Man on Fire? I don't. Oh, that one. Man, I have not seen a lot of Denzel Washington oh, movies. I really come haven't. Come on, man. Denzel I really awesome. haven't. Um, that one has actually Mark Anthony's in that. <laughs> as a drug lord. <laughs> Now I know when you watched it, your mom probably put that <laughs> shit up. <laughs> Puerto Rican men, women love Mark, Mark Anthony. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way you put that movie on. <laughs> you know what? It's fucked up, though. When I'm cooking for the girls, I put Mark Anthony on. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so he he's like a bodyguard and um he's not really a dad in the movie, but he's gone through some stuff. He takes on um he becomes a bodyguard for Mark Anthony's blonde haired, blue eyed white daughter. Uh Dakota Fanning's his daughter in the movie. A lot of blonde haired, blue eyed Puerto Rican no. women out there. No. Yeah, there is Name one blonde haired, blue eyed Puerto Rican woman. I mean, I don't know any. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I and mean, he's supposed to be Colombian too in the movie. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of blonde-haired, blue-eyed Colombian baddies out there. 
<laughs> look at them baddies. But yeah, um, he becomes the 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 bodyguard to this little girl and stuff like that, and then she gets kidnapped. Yada yada yada. He goes on a fucking uh he war path. He used to be basically like a CIA agent or something like that, and he goes on a war path, killing everybody so he can track her down and save her. Spoiler alert. Come to find out. In the end, it was the dad arranged for her kidnapping so that he can do insurance fraud. Uh, but they weren't supposed to actually kidnap her. Uh, and they ended up actually kidnapping her. <laughs> Ooh. And so once he saved her, he goes back to her and he basically tells the dad and tells Mark Anthony, like, I know what you did kind of deal. And Mark Anthony ends up killing himself. Ooh. But um, like he bonded with that girl. And he was like, I will go through anything. Ends up dying. But that's a dad. Like, I'll go through mm-hmm. hell. I will be that man on fire, that burning man to save you kind of deal. Mm. So Denzel actually does a few good dad roles. So, you know, media depictions of father. I've never even thought about it. Will Smith does them too, but I think Will Smith does that because he's a dad. His kids are weird, though. His kids are weird as fuck. His kids, <laughs> His kids are fucking weird. Man. That poor man. I think when he smacked Chris Rock, I think that was just him tired of people talking about his family. So let's stop before he comes and smacks like us. us. Keep my name out your fucking mouth. But, you know, now, thankfully, I think our kids are getting better depictions of dads bluey yo shout out to bluey shout out to bluey shout Shout out out to to them australian cartoons mate (laughs) they're leading the way in like the the good representations of fathers but we didn't have that you know the best representation of father we had going back to cartoons what freaking master splinter (laughs) master splinter and you know what you can't even call that a good representation because he trained those turtles to be ninjas for revenge yeah yeah he yeah. I, I was legit just about to say that yeah like, yeah yeah he loved the turtles but he trained them for revenge but he trained them to get back at shredder was, yeah, who he, killed his master kill orokosaki yeah. <laughs> actually funny thing you know who played the voice of shredder who uncle phil get out yeah really yeah what he was the voice of shredder think about his voice and you'll hear it I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to YouTube. You're gonna have to look it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was the voice of Shredder. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> to bring everything full circle. <laughs> but you know, I don't know. I think it's interesting because we had. I think our parents had a totally different media representation of what a father should be when they were growing up. We had totally different representation. I think during our time, they tried to do a shift, right? But then they ended up falling back and you ended up getting shows like Two and a Half Men, Mm -hmm. where they were just horrible representations of father and father figures, right? Now, it's finally on the other end of the circle where you're now getting better depictions of fathers, but they're also less traditional fathers, whether that's a positive or a negative and maybe that's something we touch on a little bit next time because it's something I've been wondering where it's like, I look at how I interact with my kids sometimes and I'm like, yo, I'm not interacting with a traditionally manly way. Yeah. I'm oh. interacting more like the way the bluey dad would do. You know, it's like, it's you're a dad, you're being a great dad, but you're not the traditional manly dad. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point because yeah. there there are times where I kind of flip back and forth the, the old school manly dad, like, you know, this is how this works. Like, Blah, 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 and kind of being a little too forceful. Yeah. And then, you know, getting down on their level. Yeah. You, you go to the more the gentle parenting style dad. And it'll bring up the whole toxic masculinity thing and all that. But at the same time, like, can there be a medium where you can be a traditionally masculine dad, but also being a good father that's realistic? That's a good point. You know, the closest I can think of is Hank Hill. And we already said he's not perfect, but he was a traditionally masculine kind of dude. But then they played up his masculinity by saying that he was he was that way because he felt um, insecure about his narrow, narrow urethra. urethra. <laughs> I'm so like, a narrow urethra. <laughs> <laughs> he had no ass, tiny hips and a narrow urethra. <laughs> So it's like even when they wanted to put a more traditional father who was a good representation of a father, they had to give him all these like they had to knock him down anti-masculine traits. Yeah, right? they had like, to knock him down a couple of pegs. I don't think there's anything wrong with masculinity. So maybe hopefully 
we're we're trending in a good direction now, but I think they need to let we're, dads be dads. Yeah, we're wimpifying them a little too much. Yeah, and not like not like the bluey dads a wimp or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing wrong with being a more traditional masculine dad too. You know, you don't have to be Archie Bunker from All in the Family. <laughs> But you also don't have to be like a total, you know, uh, a, what was Phil and Lil's dad from the Rugrats? I know who you're talking about. Yeah. But I don't remember his name. But he was. That's basi- how little of a presence yeah, he had on the show. He was basically the lesbian version of a beard. He was a, yeah, he was a lesbian beard. He was like so not. And actually, they made her a lesbian in the re- in the reboot. Yeah. Yeah. Because it made the most sense. Yeah. But you could be a good dad and they should have depictions of good fathers. And they don't all have to be masculine. You can have less masculine fathers, but you can also have masculine fathers. Why not offer both opportunity, both flavors, you know, there's no happy medium. And to kind of bring back what I was saying, like the fifties had their own style, dad, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, millennials, like each depiction of dads and media were the same. You know what didn't change? What? The moms. The moms Moms have always always been competent, loving, caring, smart, and having their crap together. And the only times the moms weren't depicted like that were in shows where the moms were the main characters and they had to resolve their own problems. Like Roseanne, where that's that was the twist on the show, that she wasn't this perfect mom that you see in all of those sitcoms. She was a real woman getting her stuff together. And there was a few shows like that showing that they're not these perfect sitcom moms from like the past. But then we got out of that era and we're back to the perfect mothers, you True. know, with the bumbling dads. True. We had a short period where they were trying to fix dad's depictions and also make more realistic mothers. And then they said, nah, screw that. Go back to the bumbling asshole dads and the perfect mothers. I don't like it. I don't like I don't like that they have it like that. I'm happy that it's changing a little bit, but it's at the sacrifice of showing masculinity, which I don't think is necessarily a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good topic. Yeah. For uh, another, another episode yeah i like it yeah i mean i that's all i kind of wanted to talk about just that you know these are the these are what we consume the media we consume whether it be books whether it be newspapers whether it be movies tv shows radio music these are all the things that affect us right that that shape and mold us not only our parents the media around you shapes and molds you they change us they affect us they make us think about who we are and i don't know if it's necessarily a good thing if all we're seeing is negative depictions yeah i definitely agree with that 100 percent. so in conclusion watch more anime watch more anime because <laughs> at least the dads aren't there <laughs> But um, I think we call it. Uh, I think we call it. Here. I think I think I got off my chest what I wanted to get off my chest. Ditto. Dads need to be better. Dad. Be better. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. We need to be us. But wait, I haven't had a chance to apologize yet. Don't do that. <laughs> How can I be apologetic? <laughs> the Heracles of apologies. <laughs> if I haven't apologized yet, I apologize for running long this time. <laughs> Boom. Got it. You're trash. <laughs> You're trash. You Take it, apologize. Tanky. Don't, don't apologize to nothing. But, uh, right. you know, we appreciate you guys listening and sticking with us. Uh, we're going to keep doing this. We, we enjoy doing this, and we hope we're bringing a little bit of levity and at least a little bit of introspection into your lives. Yeah, that word. Do you need me to define introspection? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, everybody. Once again, this has been High Podcast. I'm Dad. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.